haven't been on this bike for a while, the tire pressures feel a bit, a bit soft. But, um, yeah, look after her, won't you? <laughs> Bye, darling. I shall miss you. <laughs> oh, great that she actually gets ridden. <laughs> um, and I can bring the video and get a few of your customers talking about Kurt. Yeah, cool. Um, next Friday. All what right. time do you have beers from? Now, there's a bit of shit in the back of my car because I collect, we get firewood from the local park. There's an Uno card in here as well. <laughs> <laughs> Just one Uno card. <laughs> That's how we play Uno at my house. <laughs> <laughs> Does this have a special button? No. <laughs> a lot of brands are trying to trying to represent the community and I think with Curve what makes us really different is perhaps that we actually are all riders and we're all um, testing our products and ensuring that anything that we produce we've ridden and we wouldn't release anything that we wouldn't ride ourselves or outside looking in it's like man this is like a really strange cult with all these people um, kind of riding curves and going on these silly adventures. Some, some can just, they just sound crazy. It's like, what do you mean Jesse crossed the US in 18 days and averaged 400 kilometers a day? Yeah. Like that just. I wanted to bring you along a little visit. I'm at 36 Bond Street in Abbotsford. This is Curve Cycling Headquarters. About six months ago on the Bike Chaser YouTube channel, we did a full comprehensive piece on the Handmade Bicycle Show, showing off a number of the local brands here in Australia that are building handmade bikes. And in that video, I asked our audience, which bike brand would you like us to approach and do a comprehensive review on Bike Chaser? Curve Cycling, they won the vote. So today I'm gonna to introduce you to the crew here, a little bit about Curve Cycling, and I'm also gonna be taking home Rhino's bike. Let's go have a chat. <laughs> How are you mate? Practically scripted. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. So what do we got in here? This is a good looking joint. This is Rhino's house. Yeah right. Yeah. How long have uh, you been here for? It's uh, nearly a year. Yeah okay. Yeah nearly a year. So wow. we've, we've kind of moved out of our shed. We've yep. grown a bit in the last um, three years. Kind of a steady, steady growth and a change in, in the business. So Curve kind of started off as a as a wheel uh, manufacturer yeah, right. and trying to understand carbon and um, why it's so expensive and why there were only a few players in the market. And then uh, two and a bit years thereafter, uh, we started making our titanium and steel frames. Yeah, right. So it was kind of the pursuit of all these adventures we were going on and testing the products in those. So like the Tour Divide, we tested our first mountain bike rim, which is um, pretty much North America over the Rockies from Banff um, all the way down into the finish, which is New Mexico. Right. And Jesse came second in that. And we were like, yeah, we've got a great product here. The carbon's holding up really well in a really difficult environment. And then started making road um, rims as well. Yeah. And then Jesse took uh, our first wheel set into the Trans America. So it was nearly 7,000 Ks across the US and he won that. And the wheels held up again really well. And we've just kind of, it's been an evolution of that kind of principle of we're all riders, we all love cycling mm. and just kind of taking on adventures. And sometimes those adventures require us to build like a new, a new bike. Mm. Like, um, where so, is it? So, I mean, this, this is one we're going to, I'm going to, Take away, which is yours. Yeah, but this is the one you you kind of did a thing at the handmade bike show yeah, all those it. months ago. Yeah, and it was bike chaser audience voted. They yeah. wanted me to do a curve review. That's right. So how do you feel? So here we are. <laughs> are you okay your, with me riding your bike? Your wish is uh, it is pretty much being granted. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm happy with you riding my bike. I mean, we're pretty much the same size. It's actually a bit small for me because this is a prototype. So um, final production has just been agreed upon. So there are a few tweaks to, to things, but yeah, don't, don't break it, <laughs> look after it. So before we go there, do you want to just quickly show us like what's going on? You've got a beast up here, what's going on here? 
my speckled princess, which has just come back from Ayers Rock. As you can see, she's. Uh, oh my goodness. She's been. She's been ridden hard and long, like it's three and a half thousand k's off road. Um, this year, it started in Tasmania. Does that does that sort of thing excite you? That dirt and mud and just it's been taken for a proper ride. It excites me. It's. It's frustrating when it's not you that gets to go on these adventures, but I've been very lucky um, and, and have gone on some great rides um, over the last couple of years. So I was very happy to see Adam get out on the bike. Yeah, this is a gravel monster cross bike. So it's actually um, something our engineer, Liam, had a lot to, to do with um, and Jesse because everyone was kind of making mountain bikes and then just putting a drop bar on them rather than actually thinking a bit more about the geometry and what's required for these like ultra um, kind of off-road races. Hey, I switched my phone <laughs> off now. This is Sorry all you, that. buddy. That's my wife, she's calling from the US. <laughs> oh, is she? Yeah. Oh, do you want to get it? No, no, it's all right. Ah, yeah, so this is a gravel monster cross bike and it's something that we're actually um, um, further kind of developing yeah, okay. um, around a three inch tire. Um, which is going to be pretty exciting. Actually, Adam's just jumping on what will be what will be the Monster Cross uh, V2. There are. Right. You might be able. Oh, to there he comes! Oh no! Oh wow! That's yeah. uh, heavy duty. Look at that guy. Yeah, she's a big beast. Big beast. I feel so light because it's not loaded. Yeah. What were you calling it? I was calling it Doctor Deal Good. <laughs> Or, or Mad Max, um, <laughs> something to do with Mad Max. Maybe call it Mel. Just call it Mel. Yeah, Mel Gibson. <laughs> the little little brother of that, which we're pretty excited. It's the Steel Kevin. So we've made made Kevin, which are these guys here. Yeah, okay. So you can run like a 650 B wheel up to 2.2, or you can run 700 C by um, 45. So you can see here, like these two are set up in 700C mode and a bit of gravel. And then that dude over there is in kind of Kevin party mode, which is 650B 2.0. <laughs> and there's something magical about steel bikes, um, that, especially that one in 650B. Like it just feels really, really right. It's just a, a lot of fun. Mm. It's, um, so that's doing really well. We, we, did a small batch of production in steel, and then we've kind of um, put in our second batch already, hopefully ready for Christmas. So if you're looking for ideas, yeah, I think Steel Kevin should be on nice. on the shopping list. I like this little Kevin you've got here. And you can see you've got huge amounts of clearance. We design our own forks as well, so. So, so what could you fit in there? Oh, you can go 650B 2.2 or. 700 by 45. So who does your paint jobs? They're all very nice looking. Yeah, these, most of our paint done in Australia is Bikes by Steve. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's more of a, um, a small independent painter and he, he kind of does a lot of work with Bastion, a lot of work with Prova and we're very lucky to have him work with Curve as well. Yeah. So I actually did a piece on Bikes by Steve. Oh yeah? Yeah, on Bike Chaser. Um, gets about 400 unique page views a month. A lot of people searching for him these days. Yeah. But I'll link to that below this video if anyone's yeah. interested in Bikes by Steve. He's a, he's, he's a very, very good painter. And to get someone that really understands how to, um, how to paint titanium is, is quite hard. His quality of work has really um, kind of been recognised by a lot, of, um, a lot of manufacturers and a lot of frame builders. So yeah, thanks Steve, we appreciate you mate. Um, yeah, and then we've got another air, so it's a similar, similar one that you're gonna take out, but yeah, this okay. is kind of in mechanical um, dual race format and with a, a different kind of wheel build, a bit of a shallow rim. Steve, this is your beast, isn't it? So, what is, so Steve, what do you do here? I am the brand founder and I help with product, yeah, okay. products, design, um, through to production, all the production relationships are my relationships. So how did you come up with the design for this bike? Um, there's only 24, is that right? There's 23, there's a bit of a story as to yeah. how many there are, why it's here and how it got its name. And But yeah, this is prototype number one 
and it started off as being my birthday present. Oh, okay. All right, so I'm born on the 23rd of December, and originally I wanted something that wasn't quite part of the Curve lineup. That was going to be special to me because I've been working with the bashing guys for the last pretty much since they started, really, since three, two years now, two yeah. or three years. I was subletting this paint booth. A lot of the, the bikes that were and are painted, are like they're both my paint jobs. Um, I used to do before other Steve took over yeah. and started doing That's all the paint. Because I used to do years. painting as well. <laughs> yeah, um, okay. So, yeah. Oh, you were in another box by Steve. Yeah, it's yeah. by Steve's. <laughs> so, That's yeah. where the name came from. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, originally I was speaking to James, the head engineer there, and Ben from Bastion, that I wanted to do a special project, and I wanted them to be involved. And it actually started off. There's a few. This is actually the idea. Actually, came from the original Cannondale's, the System Six that was aluminium and carbon. Oh, okay. But we kind of took the Bell disc, which is that bike. Yeah. Kind of just knocked it up a notch basically and try to shake a bit of weight out of it try to add a few design cues that i wanted to see on the next version of the belgi disc yep. the topper and the the seat post are by bastion yeah that's so, where they come into so it so that's how so i i presented the idea if you have a look so this, this is very bastion -y, isn't it so th this is what you're talking about yeah so yep and you can see their logo just here and with with curves. There's quite a few details in it that yeah, sort right. of highlight the collaboration. The design was 100% me using a fabricator in China that we know really well and trust and rely on. They actually developed their own method of building a frame with a void in it basically and still have it square and true. And So, so what's yeah. this bike going to be like to ride? It's pretty racy. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's racy and comfortable at the same time. It's a fast road bike called Straight Bridgeless Seat Stage. That was kind of an aesthetic thing that was brought across and a lot of people already have highlighted that aesthetically it looks tidy. So now we have a sort of a scalloped, chopped and welded uh, chainer and clearance, built-in dimple essentially. Yeah, right. It's the first bike we've had with the integrated head tube. Because there's two two carbon tube sets that you can um, kind of build a bike up from Bastion. So you can either um, go with an intermediate or a quite stiff and it's your lucky day because you get the super stiff ride. Right. Um, so she's even racier, um, I find. Um, it's interesting because the great thing about the bikes is you can kind of tweak every element from the wheel set um, and its depth to the stiffness of the the carbon, um, which was quite cool as well because no rider is the same and there's still a few design um, things that weren't finalized on these two bikes, which was essentially kind of just the tube tubing here. We were speaking with the engineer um, and with James, I think, and they realized that you didn't need this huge area of ad adhesive. So that allowed us to kind of just make it aesthetically a bit, bit prettier. And actually, the final design will actually be um, chopped even further. Yeah, the same angle as the as the stay. Seat stay. Right. And the same. Down here and then down tube, same, same angle. Down tube. Down here. So just a few little things. T t takes out a little bit of weight. Like this here, I guess, is the stamp of it being the curved fashion project. And it's number one prototype. So what started off as a birthday present to myself yep. is now the first limited edition curve product. Birthday yeah. present. Which is kind of cool. Yeah, a lucky 23. And 23. <laughs> there's a few people who say, oh, it's such an Air Jordan thing, this and that. Air, yeah, 23, yeah. It kind of just ended up that way. Yeah. And Air, because the original frame construction drawing had a void in it, had nothing but air in between the uh, the main triangle. So to me, it just made sense to call it the Belgi Air. Yeah. All right. What about what about these ones here? Oh uh, well, this, this is a Kevin in party mode. As you can see, he's got chunky tires on and he's ready for a, a bit of fun. 
this is where this is like Kevin's grandfather. Like this is where Kevin started life was the version one and the version two of the Grovel. And then we made a cyclocross bike and then this is the natural evolution of of things. So it's a bit more bikepacking and adventuring orientated, but you can also run it on the road. So that's that's what that one is. So yeah. the steel one we showed you earlier, this is just yeah. the titanium version. Yeah, okay. Um, and then this is a bike that we, it's our very first Belgie, the classic that um, Jesse and Sarah both rode in the Trans America. And um, the only variance was the disc. This is actually an even earlier version, which was our rim brake. And Albi, the people's champ, you can see he's kind of got the, the People's Champ kind of logo on on his bike. Um, he raced this at the Australian Road Nationals um, a few a few times. Yeah, right. So we kind of wanted to make it a bit special for him. Um, as you can see, he's got a super super prolonged stem and kind of really aggressive position on the bike. Um, but it just shows you that in the kind of elite pro peloton, there is still some of the some of the guys riding on, on tie, which was pretty cool. It's a cool story. But we, we kind of phasing out rim brakes over the next year. So we kind of... Um, I was hearing they're not going to be making rim brakes or manufacturers from 2020. I don't know if that's just an industry thing or... Yeah, I think like for us, carbon delamination is always an issue. We had a lot of riders that unfortunately, the, the carbon rim brakes do fail. Um, it's just the, their fundamental failing is heat and delaminations occurring obviously when it goes over like 220 degrees um, and then you have um, a separation of that um, resin really that bonds the fibers. I mean carbon's incredibly strong and that's why we love working with it in wheels and in forks. It's the same with my bike like I, I rode that across Australia and that was the first time I raced the Indy Pack. This was um, this is the bike I took and I even took ETAP across Australia when it was first released. Did you when you had to charge it every sort of other day? Well every what was it 1200 you're not changing gear very often um, and in the first when you're going across the desert True. you're yeah. pretty much staying in one gear yeah. so yeah I just charged it off a dynamo I had one one spare battery and I think I only charged them twice so yeah five and a half thousand k's wow. she's she's still going she's done many great adventures together yeah. i remember elby and i both taking these bikes down the back of buffalo on the mountain bike kind of gravel tracks just showing how strong carbon is but also how comfortable titanium is and how resilient both are mm. together so yeah all our bikes have got cool little stories um if they could talk they'd they'd never shut up really <laughs> so quickly on that one of the things that I've sort of picked up with Curve. I'm very much on the outer sanctum, not on the inner sanctum, but the inner sanctum with Curve is, is very, very strong. And it's, it's, it's almost like a cult, cult, cult following. I don't know if that's the right word, but uh, can you tell me a little bit about, about the, the customer? About the cult. The cult, yeah. Please tell me about the cult. Yeah. Well, um... Each night we pray. Yeah. What's that? Each night we pray. Right. We pray on a Friday. Yeah, um, okay. They shed beers. We, we just kind of really invested in... Is this what like, this area is about? People coming in yeah, the Yeah, they just and... come out and... I mean, it's a bit of a mess because Adam's kind of come back from Race to the Rock. And um, we usually have Friday night, you know, we clock off work in the, in the Australian tradition. We clock off work a bit, e bit, bit earlier, kind of roll out a few eskies, turn up the music, have a bit of a, a yarn, as they say. Yeah. Um, What's that other thing? We've got a barbecue out the front, yeah. so we throw throw a few uh, snags yeah. on the barbecue. Yeah. I'm some South African, so I'm like, African, yeah. I, they don't say that. They're like, yo, let's uh, let's fire up the braai, eh? We'll go and uh, eat some uh, eat some meat. Yeah. But um, before we wrap up, so your bike that I'm about to take, is there any last thing that I need to know about that before I take it off your hands for a week? Yeah, not. There's not a hell of a lot really to to be mindful of. It's at the end of the day, it's just it's just a bike, you know. Go out and have some fun on it. <laughs>